Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. It's Stephanie with Big Dog Mom. So let me just, getting just a little situated, I want to make sure my phone is turned off and make sure we are ready to go. All right. So thank you guys for joining um, for our weekly live session. Today promises to hopefully be um, just a, a wealth of information and hopefully you can take away some some tips that I mean, at the end of the day, the goal is that could potentially save your dog's life. And I know that's a lofty goal, so I say that on the outset that my hope and prayer is that uh, I use the next 20 to 30 minutes wisely for you and um, that you take away a lot of information that can really help you and your dog. So um, with that said, just let me know if, um, like I said, if you're... If you can't hear me, if anything seems wonky, you just let me know. So I'm trying to just make sure that we are good to go here. So I am here with my trusty cohorts, Junior and Sully, who will be our demo dogs for the day. Today, the topic is bloat. And specifically, you know, I had said in, in the um, promotion leading up to this live that we are going to be talking about bloat kits. And so this is a bloat kit and we're going to go through this in detail and I'm going to show you um, essentially there's kind of six steps or six I did ten so six steps um, that will uh, that we'll go through that um, that you can use some of which are contained within the bloat kit and then a couple of extra things so um, so yeah so that's what we're going to be talking about is is bloat and what you do if you suspect that your dog is bloating um, okay so the first thing is so who am I Big Dog Mom, you guys know, uh, you know, I have a blog and a brand, the, the Big Dog Mom brand that is really dedicated to serving large and giant breed dogs and um, providing education, resources, information that help you take better care of your dogs. So that's who I am, um, and that's kind of who I serve. So um, let me see if I can angle that so you can see the, the big boys. So um, so that's who I am today. Like I said, we're going to be talking about bloat, bloat kits, what they are and how to use them. And then, um, the one quick thing that I wanted to highlight and in the blog post, which is linked to the description in this video. Um, so read, definitely read that full blog post that goes way beyond bloat kits is a tiny portion of it. It goes way beyond the information that I'm going to give you here today that is essential for you to know about bloat, about, you know, what the condition is. Um, how you treat it and prevent it. This today is just going to be kind of emergency measures if you are not somewhere where you can be with a vet, you know, within a handful of minutes. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, the other thing that I wanted to let you know is that, as always, I do have a freebie that I think is absolutely spectacular and a must-have for every dog owner, especially those that have um, bloat-prone uh, breeds, so Great Danes, etc. cetera. Um, and so here, let me just pull that up. So there's the link, uh, bigdogmom.com slash bloat. And then, and then here is just basically what it looks like. And so this is a quick reference guide that will walk you through. Basically, it kind of gives you all the signs and symptoms of bloat, uh, what um, the kind of the phases look like, what's actually happening inside the dog during uh, a, a, a case of bloat. And... Um, and then how you treat and prevent it. And so on that reference guide, it's basically just a one page grid that you'll want to kind of keep on your refrigerator. That's kind of how I designed it. So there's that. So if you, if you want, be sure to go to bigdogmom slash, uh, dot com slash bloat and grab that today. So, all right. So number one. And we're just going to get right in it because I'm hoping to be able to, and, and if you guys have questions, what I'm going to do is kind of go through these, demo a few things, and then, um, and then answer any questions. So as I see things come up, I'll, I'll, I'll try to answer them along the way. But so that we get through everything, I'm going to make sure that I try to stick to um, a pretty, pretty swift clip here. So number one, call your vet. So if you suspect and, and your, your dog is showing any of the signs or symptoms of bloat, so it could be, there's a whole list of like 20 different symptoms and sometimes dogs don't show any symptoms. So that's kind of a challenge, but if they show any symptoms, so a lot of the dog owners that I surveyed in the big dog mom community said, you know, my dog just seemed off. They were pacing and uncomfortable and I could tell my dog was in pain, drooling profusely, um, 
that is another one. And then one of the hallmarks that many, many of the dog owners talked about and that is known with bloat is vomiting. And essentially what that means is just trying to vomit and not really being productive in vomiting. So, um, and I, and I did question, so is that like, like, um, you know, dry heaves where a little bit of bile will come up and it's not, it's, it's essentially kind of throwing up unproductive, meaning no food, but a lot of times you'll have like white foam that that's what that would look like. Um, and so keep in mind what's happening inside your dog is that gas is building up in the stomach and in the, the later phase, phase two and phase three of bloat. And it's, and it's essentially, um, gastric, um, dilatation volvulus. So, so basically that just means that the, the gas is building up and the stomach is starting to twist. And that is life threatening within minutes to hours. So really time is of the essence. The, the point about, um, call your vet, um, hi Norman, thanks for joining. So the, the point about call your vet is number one, as soon as you start to notice any kind of symptoms like this, and, and again, reference the blog post, there's a whole list. And on that reference guide I told you about, there's a whole list of all the different types of symptoms. If you have that front and center and you are aware of these things, you're more apt to catch it early. And that is absolutely essential. So you start to notice these symptoms, call your vet. Um, the point that I made in my blog post was have your vet on speed dial, your vet, your primary vet and your emergency vet, have those numbers ready to go so that, you know, you don't waste time. You don't have time. So, um, so that's the first thing, dial them. If it's going to take you longer than say, you know, depending on what phase your dog is in with bloat, um, if it's going to take you longer, 10 to 10 to 30 minutes, and depending upon how severe the dog is, you will want to judge whether or not you move forward with a bloat kit. So um, what you would want to do, though, is number one, call your vet. The second thing that I would have you do um, is take, it's called simethicone. Is that, that's the kind of the, the actual technical name of it. But you probably have heard of Gas-X. So this is going to be... So this is an example, bloat buster, which also comes in the bloat kit if you buy the actual full bloat kit. Um, bloat buster, if you can see that. So this is bloat buster, and sorry, gas X. And so these are two things that would be forms of simethicone. So, um, and these come in 180 milligrams. But basically what this is going to do, um, it essentially, it doesn't decrease the, pr the production of the gas in, in the stomach, but it improves the elimination of the gas. So essentially what happens is the gas particles are small. And what this does is it, um, it actually decreases the surface tension of the gas bubbles, which allows the small bubbles to turn into large bubbles and then be eliminated easier. So that's what these products do. They work pretty quickly. So I would say, even if you're, you know, gonna in route to the vet and you're not gonna move forward with any of the stuff in the bloat kit, the simethicone is gonna, it, it could potentially be a lifesaver. So have this on hand, always. Junior, you're my demo dog, where are you going? Joan, Joan, come here. Joan, you gotta come, I need you, come. All right, he's ignoring me. Here, Sally comes for treats. So, um, okay, so the, the gas X. So the one thing that, um, that I wanted to let you know. So it's going to be safe to use in large doses. You can redose it for sure. Um, and the amount that you would give, so these are 180 milligrams. Lay down, Celso, lay down. Come on, lay down. Um, these are 180 milligrams. So the Great Dane, um, the Great Dane lady, if you guys have heard of her, she actually recommends 10 of um, the amount, the pro she uses Phazime, which is another name for the Symethicone. And so she recommends 10 of them. Essentially, I calculated you would use about nine of these. Um, and you would do nine and then you would, you could redose in about five minutes. If the dog throws any of that up, you would just redose that immediately. And then with the bloat buster, it gives you directions on here. So emergency volume is four to six cc's, four to six mils. Um, and that, the syringe that comes in here is filled to six. So you would just give a full syringe, and then again, you could redose it as well. At the same time, you could, um, I would recommend you give a probiotic, and I'm a huge one with probiotics at all times, 
And this bloat is one of those ways that you can really help promote the good, give the good bacteria in your dog's gut a fighting chance. And, and basically what they're going to do is they're going to kind of go battle with the gas producing bad bacteria that's in their gut. And so that probiotic is going to help. And so the, um, the bloat kit that I purchased actually has dog zymes. So this is a probiotic kind of a paste. So let's see if you can see that. So it's a probiotic paste and it does have directions on here that essentially you would give, it works out to be about one CC for every 15 pounds of body weight. So, you know, I, I would say if you have like a 120 pound dog, you're going to give about eight of those. I kind of pre-calculated. I don't do math in my head, <laughs> but it would be about eight CCs. And then again, you could redose this as well. Perfectly safe, um, but can actually save you time. So, and then, like I said, if anybody's got questions, just let me know. And I think that was all I wanted to say about the Symethicone. Like I said, you can definitely redose it, but this is going to be a lifesaver. So keep it, you know, in your purse, keep it wherever you go kind of with your dog, have some on hand. Okay. So let's move on. So step number three is going to be the block. And so this in my post, I gave you directions and I have um, a link to my Amazon shop that actually has a few products that you could just put together to make your own bloat kit. So that would be kind of a homemade one. The one that I purchased has a block that looks like this. And so you could have just a regular block of wood. You could use like a, like a T PVC pipe, you know, where they have like the pipes that go out of both sides or actually I guess it would be three sides of the, the PVC pipe. But essentially what you need is something that you could have and it's got a hole through it where the tube is going to go through the hole and then into your dog's esophagus. So again, so the block, um, let me just say, so I wouldn't start this process. And I already said this at the beginning, uh, unless you feel like your dog is in kind of phase two of bloat and beyond. And so that would mean kind of a rapid heart rate gums that are like brick red, gray. Um, but basically when you press on their gums, they don't change back to that nice, healthy pink. Um, that's a signal that your dog is in is absolute distress. And then the other symptoms that I mentioned before, the throwing up more frequently, um, throwing up or attempting to throw up gagging kind of stuff. So if all of that is the case, then I would, and you can't be at your vet, uh, you know, within 10 minutes, so they're in phase two and you can't be there in 10 minutes, then I would start this for sure. Because time is of the essence and your dog, it likely is the stomach potentially is twisting, hopefully not, but potentially is. And this would be a life-saving kind of procedure. So let's get back to the block. So you're going to position the block on, so Sally, I guess you're going to be my demo dog. Junior, Junior, come, come here, come here. I need a dog that's awake. Does anybody relate to this? <gasps> Give me an amen if you can relate to dogs that have no excitement. Okay, so I think I have Sully here. So let's see if everybody can see Sully. Okay, so so what you're going to do, and this is nice because it actually has a string on it. Um, so basically you would, you and the other thing I have to mention, all of this, well, the positioning of the block you could potentially do by yourself, but ideally over this step and the next step, you're going to have to have another person with you. So if you're alone, you really can't do this. You, you need another person, especially if you've got giant dogs like this, and especially if your dog is in distress because they're not going to be as willing to sort of sit still and that sort of thing. Okay, so you can't see him. So, so, put your head up. So your base, <laughs> we should have practiced. Okay, so like, Okay, so basically the nice thing is you would just put this around and then fasten it. You would open their mouth. It would sit in their mouth. I'm just going to demonstrate. It would sit in their mouth. Hi, thanks for joining us, Junior. Okay, so let's see. He's going to be a good demo dog. So you would put the strap around and then I didn't bring any, but you're going to want wrap. So basically it's going to go in the dog's mouth. I know, Jun. And then you're going to wrap this around their mouth, wrap like vet wrap or something around the mouth to fasten this block inside their mouth. So it just holds their mouth open. <laughs> Do you like that? Here, let's try that. No? 
Okay. So that's the block. You're going to position the block. Um, and the idea is that then the tube, and we'll get to that, is going to go through their esophagus and into their stomach to release the gas. So, so that's that. So have some vet wrap, which I do not have in my bloat kit, which would be a critical error. So I want to, after this live, I'll make sure that I get some vet wrap in there. Um, okay. So the fourth step is insert the tube into the stomach. And there are a few things to know about the whole, the tube, because this is probably the hardest part of the whole thing. And I'm going to try to do this with a demo dog that is going to actually stand for you so you can see. Okay. So number one, the goal of the tube, and here's the tube, and I put one in that Amazon shop as well that's very similar to this one. Um, on the end of the one that you buy, it, the, um, if you buy an actual uh, bloat kit, it has kind of a beveled end, ed, edge end on one of the ends. It's kind of softer, and that's going to be the end that you're going to put down into the stomach. It's just not a rough edge. The rough edge is on the other side. So this side is the one that you're going to handle. Okay. Um, the, so keep in mind, now look, I'm going to have to get up and have my dog hopefully listen. And I've got a microphone on, so hopefully everybody can hear me. So we are going to get up. Come here, Joe. Come. So your dog's stomach, come. You have to listen. Some dogs have to think on a mind of their own. Okay, come here. Come, come here, bud. Okay, come here. It's like turning a barge. Okay, hopefully you can see him. Don't be alarmed. His skin is icky because he was on itraconazole and it kind of messed with his coat right here. But I'm aware of it, so no worries. Okay, so here is a dog standing up. Hopefully everybody can see him. Sully, you're going to have to get up. Salsa, up. So, move. Okay, stand over here. Come. Okay, so now we've got our full dog. So you got to scooch out of the way. Okay, so the dog's stomach, so you can see he's, so this is his left side. <laughs> this is his left side. His stomach is going to be, so right around here, right here is his last rib, right there. So his stomach is right in this, in this area on his left side. So if a dog is bloating, you you can feel and and see usually you can see but you can definitely feel the distension the the swelling right here on their stomach so so basically what you're going to do is the first thing you want to do is measure your tube ahead of time here june i'm gonna have you sit sit good all right we're gonna have to give lots of treats i can tell okay so here's the tube so essentially what you're going to want to do is measure first and do this before you ever need to do it. No, we're not playing right now. So stop. Okay. So the way you measure is you basically go from, so you can see hopefully here. So here's the dog's mouth. And you're going to kind of trace alongside here until you get to where, like I said, that last rib is and their stomach. So normally, and I'm not going to cut this because it's fine for now, you're going to sharpie right there and cut. And basically what you want is a length of tube that, so mine was exact. You would actually want to increase that by a few inches so that the tube comes out and sticks out of their mouth a little bit. You want that tube to be a little bit out. So, and actually it could be a little bit longer than that because I'm going to show you uh, a few directions that you're going to want it to be just a little bit longer. Okay. So, so that's, that's how you measure Sharpie cut and you can soften the edge of the one side that's going to be going in. Okay. Um, before you do this, you're also going to want to lubricate. So you position the block, you're going to lubricate the tube and that just helps it go into the stomach easier. And you can use any kind of personal lubricant. I don't have any right here, but the bloat kit actually comes with a, um, a syringe to apply lubricant if you wanted to use that. Honestly, if I was in you know, a, a rush, I would just lube it all up and start. So, because like I said, time is of the essence. Okay. So to insert the tube, basically you're going to have your block <laughs> come here. You're going to have your block fastened in there. And then when you're inserting the tube, basically you're going to start in it. It can cause the dog to kind of gag a little bit. 
essentially, if you go slow, uh, what I hear, and I've never had to do it, but that the dog should start to kind of swallow that tube. And because that's kind of going to be their natural reaction. So you're going to want to kind of allow the dog to sort of uh, sort of start to swallow the tube. Basically, it's going into their esophagus. That's the idea. So when you start in here, you're gonna you're gonna kind of you might have to kind of go in and out as you slowly and gently put it down their throat. And again, you're gonna need another person here helping you. So essentially, one person would be managing the tube, and the other person would be kind of holding on to the dog. Hopefully, that makes sense. So. You're just gonna kinda go back and forth as you are putting the tube in. And I think you you should be able to feel either resistance or it going through pretty easily. Um, but just kinda like I said, keep keep kinda moving back and forth. The directions in this uh, blow kit actually say to blow gently on the one side, on the side that you're putting it in. So essentially it would go like that. So you're putting, you're inserting it into the dog's throat and kind of gently blowing. And that basically kind of blows up a little bit the esophagus to allow the tube to go in easier. And I know we're going long, so I apologize. Um, so you basically will feel, so as you get down here, and so as this tube is going down, and hopefully this is only taking a matter of you know, a few seconds to a few minutes. Once you get towards the stomach, it's the directions kind of say that you're going to feel like a hard stop, and that'll be the hard stop at the stomach. And so at that point, you would blow much harder in the tube, and that will kind of open up that airway, get the tube in the stomach. You just have to be careful that you don't um, push too hard and, and go too far into the stomach, which is why you measure ahead of time. So you just want it through the opening of the stomach, and then you would take it out of your mouth, obviously. Once the tube is in, you can feel the tube is in the stomach, basically what you're gonna wanna do is have, here, I can demo this, hopefully. Sorry, June, you're being so good. And the dog would be stand, would be standing up, that would be ideal. So, I, it, unless the dog just isn't or can't. So, but anyway, you're gonna put the tube in, you're gonna let the tube out of your mouth and put the tube lower than the dog and ha the dog's head should be kind of down, lower. And that will allow the gas from the stomach to be expelled through the tube and out. And so one thing that you'll wanna do, come here, stand up, here, come on, Joe, come on. So one thing that you'll wanna do is as one person is holding the, um, the tube and the front of the dog, you're gonna want to, here, stand. While the tube is still in, one thing you're going to want to do is actually pull up on the abdomen right here. So right around where that, where the stomach is. So his would be like right here. I don't know if you can see. So his stomach would be like right here. So I would just lift up. Hi, dude. Here. You're, you would lift up like that. And that would further cause the stomach to express the, it would be fluid, gas, whatever is in there. Oh, come here. Sit down. Here, June, June, sit. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. What questions do you guys have about the tube specifically? Anything? Um, so the tube is the hardest part, but once you get, once you get the kind of the gas and all of that stuff out of the stomach, you would take the tube out, um, and you know, ideally you would be on your way going to the vet like right then. Um, so that's the tube. The next thing that you can do that comes in the kit that would only be used if, and this would be like purely like life and death, you would only use it if either the tube method did not work, you couldn't get the tube in. Lay down, June, you gotta lay down for this one. Um, if you couldn't get the tube in, or the dog is seriously in phase three, bloat, or GDV, and he's, you're losing him. So that's when, when you would do this, down. So you're gonna have your dog, um, and I have a few notes just because I want to make sure that I remembered everything. Okay, so <laughs> you're going to have your dog laying on their right side. So remember, the stomach is on the left side right here. So you're going to want your dog. <laughs> here, bang. That's a puppy. That's a good boy. So your dog's going to be laying. Hopefully you can see this. Let's just twist this down. Um, and so you're going to have, nope, stay. Okay, 
So you're going to basically be measuring, and you'll kind of want to know this ahead of time, but essentially what you're going to do is you're going to have between your, your dog's belly and their spine, you're going to measure halfway, halfway, hopefully that makes sense. I don't know if you can really see it, but essentially so his spine to his stomach, halfway in between and right behind that last, that last rib. And so that's where the stomach is going to be. And at this point, you're likely going to have so much dissension, um, d uh, d basically the swelling in his stomach that you're going to, you're going to see it. You'll be able to feel it, the distended stomach. So filled with gas. And so what you're going to want to do, no, 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 you guys stay, stay. What you're going to want to do is clean that spot really well. And then in the bloat kit, or if you make your own bloat kit, you're going to want to get a needle. And like I said, this is so like, you know, life-saving, worst case scenario, but you have it if you need it. So <laughs> you guys smell good. Um, so what you're going to want is a needle at least about an inch and a half long and with a basically a, th a thick, big, huge needle is what you want. And so when you judge the size of the needle, it's the lower number is going to be the bigger needle. And so you want, so mine is a 14 gauge. So that's what this says. So mine is a 14 gauge needle. Um, 16, 18 would work well as well. So, I mean, obviously we're dealing with huge dogs. So you would want a, a pretty big needle for this. You're going to have the dog lay on the right side. Remember, the left side is where the stomach is. And then measure halfway in between the spine and the stomach. So that gives you this area right around here. And feel for that last rib. So Junior's is right here. And so his stomach is kind of right in this area. And so what you're going to do is you're going to basically kind of clean that spot really well with alcohol. You can shave it. Ideally, I mean, ideally you could shave it. But if time is of the essence, I would just clean it real well. And then you're going to basically uncap and insert the needle. And essentially, you're inserting the needle into the stomach and releasing the gas that's in there. And this can potentially literally save your dog's life. And so it's not something I would do if you are, you know, within a few minutes of your vet and, and you know, you can, you can get there. But if, you know, you live out in the country and your dog is bloating, that's kind of this message would be for, for those of you that would fit that category. Um, so you're going to insert the, the needle, insert the needle right where I said to measure. And so when you do that, all the, the gas and the fluid, whatever liquid, anything that's in there is going to hopefully come out. And then you're going to basically leave that inserted. You can recap it and basically leave it in there and go to the vet. And that would be kind of that, like I said, this last ditch effort to save your dog's life. So the needle. If there are any questions about that, let me know. But again, say you tried the tube, the tube didn't work, and then you would do the needle. Um, let's see. The other thing that comes in the bloat kit is directions. So in the actual bloat kit, if you buy one, it comes with that. Um, but you can easily, all of these materials are probably materials you even have in your home. So now that you kind of know how to use them, you could easily... In a pinch, if your dog today bloats and you happen to have seen this, you could probably grab some materials and, and do just what I, what I directed, what I said. So, so that, so then the last thing that I wanted to mention, and I am by no means an expert, and quite honestly, I would probably need somebody to teach me where this, um, acu, acupressure point is. Um, but basically here, let's see if I can scoot over. I don't know if everybody can see me, but basically it's going to be on your dog's hind left leg. So, June, I need you to stand up. Okay, this isn't going to work too well with you not standing. Come here. Do you want one? You want one? Okay, stand. Come. Let's go. Come. Up. Okay. Sometimes we need a little, a little kick there. <laughs> Come on. Is that a calming signal? Come on. Stand up. Stand. Stand. Okay. So now we've got our dog standing. So essentially this acupressure point, and I'm probably not going to be able to find it, but essentially so you can feel your dog's knee. So you can feel your dog's knee. There's a little indentation kind of right in here where 
um, if you massage right there, now your dog would need to be there, probably laying down even, um, but if you massage in this, in the right area, so if it's not exactly where I'm feeling it, but you can kind of feel an indentation there. Um, but you would basically massage that, and what that does is it, um, it uh, triggers peristalsis of the um, intestines, and it would basically increase the, the ability of the stomach to kind of contract and release that air kind of all on its own. So it, it, it can help with that. Um, it, this would help if torsion hasn't occurred. So essentially if, you know, the stomach hasn't twisted, that acupressure point could actually really help. So, so say, you know, let's run through a scenario. The dog starts showing signs of bloat. You're basically en route to the vet. I would give this semethicone. And I might even have somebody sit back there and do that acupressure point while you're driving to the vet. And that would be ideal just to do those couple of things. So I would do the methicone and the probiotic would be what I would do if you're going to be able to get to a vet. It's just in those situations where the dog is phase two, phase three, and you don't have the ability to, to get to a vet right away. You would go through the tubing and, and then you would potentially at the, the end of the day, you would try the needle, uh, needle method. So to release the gas from the stomach. So hopefully that makes sense. So let me, I did a lot of talking, <laughs> so I apologize. And we are probably, oh, well, we're over 30 minutes, so I apologize. Um, Lynn, Tracy, I see you. Thank you so much for coming. Um, Faye, no worries. Uh, she says, I'm sorry I'm late. And then Vanessa, thanks for this information. You're very welcome. I hope it helps. And please share this. If you guys got any value out of it, please share it. Um, because I do think just seeing somebody kind of walk through what's in a bloat kit and maybe how to use it probably wasn't a perfect demo, but um, hopefully it was at least somewhat helpful. I know for me, I'm quite visual, so seeing that really helps. Um, Debbie, um, all very clear, thank you, um, that, uh, yeah, that you would worry and panic and forget it all. So quite honestly, that's why we get prepared. So I would say have a few bloat kits have them ready to go, have one in your car, um, because there were a few stories, and if you read my post, there was one specific story where a woman, um, her dog bloated in the car. She picked, she picked the dog up um, from a, just a boarding facility or what have you and got the dog in the car, and the dog started bloating in the car, was kind of throwing up, and she could tell something was wrong. So you just literally never know. And then say you're an hour away from anywhere. <laughs> so... Um, have one in the car, have one, just know how to use it. And qu I will tell you, in all honesty, I didn't know how to use it before I wrote the post. I, I We have Mastiffs. Yes, bloat is a risk in a, because they're a deep-chested breed. But um, but I, it, it, I wouldn't have known. I, I, I literally wouldn't have. And I bought this kit a while ago, and it sat in the closet. That's embarrassing to admit. But today, we can all say you know what, now we've got some information, we've seen it done. If you have somebody with you, so say what I would do is say to my husband, I'm gonna show you what I'm supposed to do when I need it, right? So if, if we ever notice these symptoms, and I might grab my reference card, um, so let me just put that up in the, in the link so you have it. But so what I might do, let me sit over here, um, is d inform my husband or my friend or who, whoever could potentially be the person with you when this happens and say, this is what I need to do in that moment. And so this is how we're going to insert the tube. This is what I'm going to do. This is what your responsibility is. So essentially what you're doing is you're, you're preparing ahead of time. And so if it comes to that point and you feel like, oh my God, I'm freaking out, then that other person can be there to help. And so that's what I would say. Just let's be level-headed today, plan for kind of the worst case scenario. And and I think it's that preparation that helps us with the, the freak out, you know, because I would be one too if my, I mean, I see blood and I'm like, oh, what what is this? Do we need to rush to the vet? And then you figure, oh, they just stepped on a thorn and no, they don't need to go to the vet. So um, hopefully that helps. Um, Yes, Lynn, thank you. And then would you keep the needle in the dog while you go to the vet? Tracy asks. Yes. And I thought I mentioned that, but if I didn't, that's essential. Yes. Yeah, so when you insert that needle, you would keep it in the dog. You, you would cap it and then you would go to the vet. And so yes, that needle would stay in there for sure. Um, 
And then what do you think of having a stomach tact? Faye asks. I, if, if you had asked me last week about the, it's called gastropexy, and that's the, the name of the surgery. And usually it's going to be an elective surgery that you would add on to like a spay or neuter. Um, I would have said only in a case where A, the dog has a family history. And this is what I would have said even before doing the research. So really quickly, I would have just said, um, only if there's a strong, so in other words, a mother or a father, so a sire or a dam of this, the dog that you have, or a sibling that had had bloat. So if they, if they had a first degree relative that had had bloat, I would say, yeah, I would probably consider it. Um, but not really outside of that. I, I have really changed my opinion on that, to be completely honest. I, I feel like if I had a Great Dane, I would get it no questions asked. And I would just get it purely based on the breed if I had an Irish setter or um, a bloodhound. So these are all breeds that, that would be predisposed just by their, anat- their anatomy, so their structure and their breed. And by those two things, and I talk about this in the post, that makes them more at risk because they are narrow. So if you look at them face, you know, facing the dog, they're going to be narrow. Um, in other words, not a wide tank like Junior. That doesn't mean that Junior's not at risk, but what I'm saying is it would be worse anatomically to be very thin, like a Great Dane, and then when you look at the side where they have a very deep, deep chest relative to that width. So it's sort of the ratio between those two things that would cause that dog to be at great risk. And we still don't know why... um, there's a lot that we don't know. And, and I did bring, um, and I did bring it. So let me, I'm going to share with you a couple of things really quick. And then we're going to go because I know this is running really long, but I feel like it's hopefully helpful information. But so you asked about the gastropexy. So I think at this point, if I had one of those breeds that's listed on this quick reference card, I would consider it. I would definitely consider it. And because I, until there's a blood test, until we have more information around the causes of bloat, I feel like that's prudent. And, and there are, I know Embrace Pet Insurance, I I believe they covered on their wellness plan. I don't know what all of the ins and outs. I actually don't have pet insurance for our dogs, sadly to say. Um, but if I did, that's, it would be a consideration. If I was getting a puppy, I would probably choose Embrace. And, and that's not an affiliate kind of a recommendation. I don't even have any kind of relationship with them. But if they, since they cover it, that's what I would do. Uh, and I would, I would study and, and prepare for all of this ahead of time. So if I was buying a Great Dane, which I would love to have a Great Dane at some point. I grew up with Danes, love them. Um, that, that's what I would do. I would probably do it. And I would do it in and around the time of spay or neuter. So, um, unfortunately, if you're going to breed the, you know, you would have to make different choices because if the dog's going to stay intact, potentially you could still do it. Um, there is a recommendation and I have the kind of the, the information in the post about a male dog that's unneutered and some concerns around doing the gastropexy in a, in an unneutered male dog. But if I had a female, I, I probably would do it. And so maybe the dog is going under for, x-rays or for whatever, then maybe you could tack it on to some other situation where the dog is going to be put under, um, where you could do that surgery. Okay. I'm going to go back up. So there are a bunch of questions. So I apologize if I don't, um, how would you keep the needle in the dog? Oh, did you say, how would you keep the needle in the dog? It's a huge needle and it would just stay, it, it would be like an acupressure acupuncture kind of a needle, it would just stay in there. It's a big, huge needle. So it would stay. It would be my guess. And as long as you kind of cap it and I would sit back there with the dog while you're driving to the vet. And so you could, you could do it that way too. Um, okay. So let me just, I just want to make sure that I get any, any questions. Yeah. Debbie, my husband would be the calm one as well. I would be the one a little bit freaking out, but I do feel like today if this happened, I would be ready to go. I really would. Because as I even just demoed that, I felt more comfortable. And so maybe you play with the materials and kind of measure your dog and kind of go through the thought thought experiment of what would happen. And that would help, I think, so you don't freak out. Um, so Lynn says, 
my two have had their stomachs tacked, so it gives me a little peace of mind. Yes. And, you know, the one thing to keep in mind is that when you do the gastropexy surgery, that doesn't prevent bloat. They can still bloat. But what it does prevent, because what they're doing is they're tacking the stomach to the, the lining of the, the wall in their uh, abdomen. So basically, the stomach can't twist on its axis. And that's, that's what you're doing with that surgery, is you're preventing that stomach from twisting, which is the, the killer. Because that's what's essentially compressing the veins and um, cutting off the blood flow. And that would cause you know, shock and death. And so it's the twisting that really is the biggest concern. So yeah, that's what the surgery is for. And it can be a lifesaver, 100%. Um, we are getting Zeus neutered next month and thinking of doing this. I would do it, Faye. I would, I, I probably would. In, in your case, I would probably do it. But talk to your vet. I mean, I'm not a vet. So I would, I would definitely have this as a conversation piece before the day of the neuter. And then figure out what you want to do. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't have insurance either. I was cheap when the dogs were puppies, and I even had it for previous dogs, so I'm not smart. And now, considering lots of things that we've had to deal with with June and with Sully, I could have really used it, but nonetheless. Um, did I miss where you can buy these kits? Faye says. Um, so uh, the kit that I bought was from Nature's Pharmacy, and pharmacy spelled with an F. The link to the, these bloat kits is in the post, and the description uh, has the link to that, the full blog post. And then trying to remember. So I, I don't want to forget anything. Make sure you buy some of this. This is not in the bloat kit. The bloat buster is, but this could be an easy thing that you just keep in your purse. So Phazime or Gas-X, that's Simethicone. And then um, I think what I'm going to do is maybe just share this information. So this is just links to um, some research that I thought was really interesting. So the um, uh, basically the, um, oh, I can't, the Canine Health Foundation is the name that I'm trying to think of. So there's a ton of research that's going on with bloat that I thought would be interesting to talk about um, if I hadn't gone over so much on this video. But essentially what they're looking at is the role of um, immune system genes and gut microbiome. So I thought this one was really interesting where they're kind of, they're looking at the gut and some specific genes where they have identified in Great Danes some specific genes that seem to be a, a commonality among dogs that, that bloat. And so basically what they're doing is that they, they, um, let's see, the bacterial population living in the gut, the gut microbiome is altered in dogs with bloat and they, and these dogs carry the risk allele. So essentially what they're doing is kind of seeing what is the, what is the, um, some, what's happening in that interaction between the gut microbiome in these dogs that have these alleles. And so the alleles, the, the genes, and then, so the goal would be to come up with a genetic test. So basically they would be testing for those specific genes, um, in these dogs and maybe using dietary and probiotic therapies to prevent bloat. So I thought this one was super interesting. So this one closed, um, the end of May of this year. So they are enrolling. This is a German shepherd dog trial, which I thought was super interesting. Um, there's another one where they're using uh, what we know about in cattle to, so in terms of cattle, where they have abnormalities in their stomach's ability to contract. And so they're using what we know in cattle and comparing it to, um, and this one has a whole bunch of breeds. So black and tan coon hounds, blood hounds, Bernice mountain dogs. And there's a whole bunch of um, um, German wire hair pointer. So a bunch of the different breed clubs have come together to do this trial. And essentially what the, again, the goal would be to come up with a test so that, um, basically you would have then selective breeding, uh, that you, this would be able to inform more selective breeding to prevent bloat in these breeds. So I thought that was interesting, the abnormalities in the stomach's ability to contract. So, um, and then there are some other ones that deal specifically with just the complex genetic environment of dogs that have had, um, GDV or, or bloat. So, I thought that was interesting. So it's just some upcoming research. And, you know, this won't be the last post that I do on this subject because I can already tell. I mean, it's something that I now, it's top of mind. And um, as much as I can help you guys with providing information and resources that help you, I mean, hopefully with this video, we can help save some lives. So if this happens to you, I, I just pray that this gets in the, the hands and the homes of the people that, that need it. 
you have a friend with a Great Dane, maybe share it. That would be great. So um, let's see. So I still have insurance and it's a life saver, Lynn says. That's awesome. Um, let's see. So Allison says, um, out, out your local dog shows. I got mine from a vet at a show and also did it. And they, that also did a demo for me. So that's a fantastic point. So yeah, if you're, I don't know that I've ever seen a bloat kit at a show, but that's a great point. So if you see one, pick it up and then, yeah. And I, that's another great point that, you know, whether the person that sells it to you demos or you take, you buy it and you take it or you take your materials to your vet and say, okay, so if this happens, you know that I'm 45 minutes away. I want to be prepared if this happens. And so let's just, over the course of this preventive visit where you're doing the vitals and you're taking my dog's weight and giving him vaccines, let's talk about what would happen in, with a case of bloat. These are the symptoms, and this is how I would insert the tube. And then you, you work with your vet on um, this kind of preventive use of a bloat kit. And, and then you can get their feedback as well. So I think that's a great... Great point. And all things that we can do when you go to the vet next week, you can have this discussion with them and that will help you be prepared. So um, I think that was everything that I wanted to share today. We went way long. So I apologize. It's an important topic. So I hope um, I've been able to keep your interest and not bore you to tears. I, I've bored my dogs. They're snoring and completely ignoring me. So anyway, um, like I said, the, the link to the reference guide is there, bigdogmom.com slash bloat. And the link to the blog post is in there as well. And, um, and then, you know, I do have links to the, I created a whole kind of segment of my shop that is just for the materials that you would need to make your own bloat kit. So, um, definitely you can check that out. The links are in the blog post. Um, and I think that's all I had for today. If you guys need anything, if anything comes up and you're just like, oh, and now I forgot to ask the question and I'm not an expert, but I can definitely help. So if you have any questions as we sign off here in just a second, um, just shoot me a message or a, a DM and I will, I will be sure to answer. So anyway, you guys take care. And um, like I said, share this with a friend if, if you feel like it would be helpful. And again, sorry we went so long. But all right. Happy Friday, everyone. Have a, Sorry, on this note, we are going to be, this is a happy day. We are prepared and we are ready to have fun this weekend. So anyway, take good care of your big dogs. All right. Talk to you guys later. Have a great weekend. Bye.